Hi, welcome to Microservices Lab. In this lecture, we are going to learn about variables in GraphQL. So let us get started. We are going to take the help of this mutation called create book to understand variables. So let us switch to Altair now. As you can see that we have the create book mutation over here that takes several arguments, book name, pages, category, author name and age. Right now we are passing the values for these arguments in the mutation itself. But there is an issue. In real life or in real application, this mutation will be stored in a string inside a variable. So whenever we want to change the value for these argument values, then we have to actually modify the string again and again because these values can be dynamic in nature and can be changed with each and every request. So what can be done in this case? Because this will be actually a pain to actually modify the string again and again for these values. So what can we do over here? For these values, we can use variables in GraphQL. So to use the variables in GraphQL, we will be taking the help of Altair over here and this might be different for other GraphQL clients but we will be covering only Altair over here but the process will be same for other clients as well. So to use variables we have to actually open up this tab over here you can see that variables click on this and there you will see a new menu or a new pane over here and here you will see an empty object. So in this object, we will place our all variables that we are going to use in our mutation or in our query. But before actually specifying the variables, we have to declare them. So to declare a variable, we have to actually provide an operation name. So let us see what an operation name is. As you can see that this is a mutation. To specify an operation name, we have to write it the name over here. An operation name can be anything like my operation. So here I'm specifying that I am actually going to mutate and the name of the operation is my operation. So now to declare a variable, you have to use the parenthesis first, just next to your operation name. So I have placed the parenthesis just next to my operation name. And now to declare a variable, you have to use a dollar symbol for that. So I will use dollar and then the name of the variable. Suppose I will be using this for the book name. So the variable name can be anything like here I'm going to use the name only and then we have to specify the type of this variable which will be string in this case. So I will write string. So now you can see that we have successfully declared a variable called name and it is of type string. Now the thing is that we have to use this variable. So let us use it. In place of my books, my book string, I will directly use this variable. So to use a variable, just type its name together with the dollar symbol. So dollar name. And now you have successfully declared a variable called name and successfully used the variable. Now you have to specify the value for this variable. And for that, you have to use this variable section or pane over here. So to declare the value or define the value for a variable, first you have to write the name of that particular variable. In our case, is it? It is name. So you have to actually write the name first, name of the variable, which is itself is the name over here. Name. 
you have to actually take care that you won't be writing the dollar symbol over here it is just a json and you are actually providing the value in the format of key value pair so the name of the variable is name and value can be anything that we want to provide over here let us say my new book so i have successfully declared a variable called name successfully used it and successfully provided the value for this variable now first let us execute the get books query to see the books available in the database so let us send this request as you can see that there is only one book called my book in the database now let us execute this mutation so let us send this request to so now let us execute the query again the get books query and see what we get in the response send request and now you can see that a new book the my new book is successfully created in the database so this is how you actually declare the variable use the variable and define the value for a variable you can actually provide value for more than one variable and you can actually declare more than one variable just by separating them with a comma like pages and the type of pages is int and you can use it in the similar manner pages the name of the argument and the name of the variable can be same so there is no issue in that and now you have to specify the value for the pages as well so under double quotes pages and as it is an integer and in json format you don't have to specify it in the double quotes so let us say 100 for now and let us see the name of the book this time latest book now let us send the request and again we will execute the get books query as you can see that our latest book is created in the database so this is how you actually declare the variables more than one variables and define the value for them there's one more thing to be covered up in this variable section and that is if you want to provide a default value for any variable you can do that as well to do that you have to actually use the equal to and you have to provide the default value for that suppose that for every book there will be 100 pages or let us say 200 pages then in order to provide the default value for the pages variable i only need to put a equals to sign and then provide the default value for that like 200 now let us change the name again this book now let us send the request and let us again execute this query but this time with the pages as well pages fields as well now let us send the request as you can see that our this book has 200 pages so this is how you can provide the default values as well for a variable variables are actually used in real scenarios because you will be putting this mutation in a string inside a variable and you won't be changing that variable again and again or you won't be manipulating that string for these values again and again so you will prefer a separate object that will be acting as a dictionary of key value pairs for your variables so for that the variables are used so that you can no, you don't have to actually modify your string again and again and you can put a placeholder in your mutation and you can specify a separate object or a dictionary of key value pairs that can be actually placed inside your mutation or the values for the variables can be actually replaced at runtime 
so this is why the variables are used by using variables if your server allows caching of the queries or mutation that can also be done this will actually improve the performance of your query processing as well in graphql runtime so this is one of the major benefits of using the variables so that's all for this lecture i hope you will get something from this lecture please share this video and subscribe to this channel thank you